It's been a few months now since I first made Microsoft Edge my default browser across all of my devices. Back then it lost in a RAM stress test against Google Chrome of all things. But since then Microsoft have actually updated Windows 10 and Microsoft Edge in the most recent October 2020 update. So is it still not as good with RAM as Google Chrome or have they made it faster and more efficient? Let's find out in round two. What's up guys, my name is George, I'm a freelance video marketer based in the north of England. On this channel, I share content all around tech, filmmaking and freelancing, so if that is your vibe, hit subscribe and welcome to the channel. Today we are taking another look at Microsoft Edge. It's been a few months since I did any more videos on Microsoft Edge. It has sort of just become my daily go-to browser across all my devices as I'd originally planned. I thought at some point I might have thought I'll just go back to Google Chrome or something like that, but it has actually since been updated in a few ways that aren't really super noteworthy, but it's become a lot quicker and a lot more user friendly. And I wanna see, has it actually gotten quicker or am I just thinking it's gotten quicker? So we're gonna test it against Google Chrome again in both a real world speed test and a RAM stress test. Let's kick off with the real world test starting with Google Chrome. For this real world test, I've got a few things that I've already got preloaded that I'm gonna try. One of the first things just to load up a YouTube video to have this sort of playing in the background while I'm doing other stuff as that will contribute to a lot, normally a lot of RAM usage. That's already using about 800 meg just in the background. I'm just gonna quickly mute YouTube. Hopefully that won't actually affect the RAM test that much. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on Amazon and just have a quick little browse. Let's just look at what have they got going on at the moment. Some Echo Buds have a bit of a browse on here and hopefully that will contribute a little bit. It seems to add it on about 100 to 200 megabytes. And let's say I'm distracted easily and I want to go on vines that I quote every day. So let's say in the background we've got the hot one still playing. Thank you, Thank you. And then let's go on Heli Attack 3. Still one of the things that I actually way prefer about Microsoft Edge Google Chrome is the fact that you can mute individual tabs on Microsoft Edge, whereas on Chrome, all you can do is mute the entire site. Okay, so we're now gonna play a bit of Heli Attack, <laughs> which is an OG flash game on mini clip. So, oh. This is actually, yeah, this is added on a fair bit. So we've currently got two videos playing in the background, as well as a flash game. Okay, so it's, it's sitting at around 46% of my memory, about one and a half gigs. Okay, so it's currently sitting around 1.3 gig of memory just on this theoretical everyday usage. So not a crazy amount and nothing that you would really expect to be too slow and it hasn't really affected anything else that I'm doing. It's more right now that if I was to have, say one of these podcasts playing, or a video playing. It's more the case that if you were to have a video or something playing in the background while you're using sort of a RAM intensive piece of software where you might start to notice a bit of difference. I'm not gonna load up a video to edit in this scenario just because that test would take a while to actually be able to see the results. At the moment using about 1.3 gig with Google Chrome in a real world test. Okay, so now into Microsoft Edge, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna load up my Hot Ones episode that I want to sort of have on in the background as a podcast. I actually, I need, I haven't watched that episode yet. I actually do need to watch it because I love Thundercat. Okay, and then we're going to go on Amazon, similar thing. It's using about a gig at the moment. Um, what do I want to look at on Amazon? Why aren't I getting the same similar sort of suggestions right now? Oh, let's look at some electric desk legs that I'm definitely not looking at buying. I'm definitely not looking at buying them. Okay, so in the background, I'm just going to mute the Hot Ones episode. Okay, we're getting a similar sort of performance as before. And then if I want to go on and watch the vines that I quote every day. Okay, so we've got these vines on and we're getting into about 1.2 at the moment. If it carries on like this, we're definitely gonna be surpassing Google Chrome in terms of overall RAM usage. We're using about 1.3 again. Okay, we're using a very similar performance, about 1.3, 1.4. Pretty consistently the same here. Yeah, 
I'd say we're looking at pretty much the exact same performance. In this real world comparison, it looks like both browsers are actually working pretty much the exact same. So what I'm gonna do now is go for a similar RAM stress test to what I did last time, in which I'll open about 10 4K YouTube videos all to play at the same time. And this is where I think we're gonna see the biggest difference because at the moment they're pretty much neck and neck for overall performance. So what I'll do is I'll open up 10 different YouTube videos all playing 4K video at once in each browser, then we can come Okay, so for this RAM stress test, I essentially just did the exact same scenario in both browsers, um, opening up the exact same videos, all playing 4K across YouTube, both in Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. I managed to be able to get it so that each video was playing, I would trial the audio on and off to see how they both performed. And straight out of the gate, Google Chrome was overall performing a lot better. It was coming in at about three and a half gigs, whereas Microsoft Edge was at about four and a half gigs. But as the test went on, that gap started to narrow quite a lot. Once I introduced Hell Attack 3 into the mix, it got a little bit closer and Google Chrome jumped up to about four and a half gigs, whereas Microsoft Edge was up to nearly five gig. But towards the end of this test, Google Chrome then did catch up towards five gig as well, just once I started going through different tabs. One thing I noticed in Microsoft Edge was that as I was going between different tabs, that each video was essentially on hold. The audio was playing, but the video playback was actually on hold, assuming that sort of a process to hold off on RAM usage in between when you're not actually using a tab. So it's not trying to constantly play 4K in the background, but if you go between them fast enough, then that increases the RAM usage directly. So you can see at this point, they're both pretty much neck and neck at about just over five gig. But Google Chrome is noticeably using significantly more CPU. So Microsoft Edge has stayed around 20%, whereas Google Chrome is jumping between 50 to 80%. By the time that my screen record actually stopped, you can see that Google Chrome was actually using ever so slightly more RAM than Microsoft Edge by about 200 meg, and also just short of 20% more CPU usage. But the big question is, does this really affect your day-to-day -day usage of the applications? Do you notice when you're using the browser? Is it really a big deciding factor? I think the answer to that is not really. It doesn't really make an awful lot of difference. Like when I first was using Google Chrome and started noticing problems that sort of pushed me towards considering something like Microsoft Edge, it was because I had, you know, the odd YouTube window playing in the background while I was editing a video and that would then slow it down. Since I've been using Microsoft Edge, I have noticed that happening overall a lot less. It still happens now and then if I've got a few too many tabs open while I'm trying to render a fusion composition in DaVinci Resolve. But for the most part, it's not really a big problem. But back when I was using Google Chrome on the daily, that was genuinely the bane of my life. Every time I wanted to be like doing a color grade while listening to a podcast via YouTube, it would just slow down my color grading process on DaVinci Resolve, which was always a massive pain in the ass. That is it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you have, be sure to drop a like down below and any comments with any questions you might have regarding Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, other software you want me to check out, give me a shout, I'll do that for you. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out some of the links in the description below. And until next time, I'm out.